Well, hello, visitors to and denizens of the youtube -iverse. I'm John, your social hermit in the woods, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I make one of my favorite things, which is little scotch pies. I'm going to make these using grouse meat because grouse is something I have a lot of here and a variety of ways to serve it is a good idea, and as I'll show, it's a very efficient way to use it, but it's very similar to how you would make this with a more traditional filling, like a ground beef or a ground lamb, and I'll talk about what the couple of differences are to do it that way too. Um, we do, however, have a little bit of a technical issue with this video. Uh, I routinely use a Bluetooth microphone. That's this little hands-free earpiece I use here to try to get relatively stable audio as I move around from the camera. Um, and if you're like me, you've had the experience that Bluetooth accessories work really well except for when they suddenly don't work at all. And it turns out that when I filmed most of this, for whatever reason, uh, despite the video system showing that the Bluetooth microphone was attached, it was actually not getting any audio. So all except the very end of this has no audio. So what we're going to do is I'm going to uh, pre-narrate a little section and then show you some silent video with me going, well, I do stuff, and then we'll do the next section. But you'll still get the idea, and if you follow along with the recipe, your scotch pies will taste every bit as delicious as if the audio were there. Okay, so with no further ado, let's get into it. The first step with doing this is to pre-melt your shortening and your water together. Now, you can use whatever kind of shortening you like, but I personally like using uh, leftover bacon grease here. I like to have maple cured bacon, and so that bacon grease has a very uh, uh, maple smoky kind of flavor to it, and I really like what it does to the pastry here. So uh, regardless of whether you're going to use that or something else, what you want to do is get one half cup of your shortening, and you'll see that I kind of uh, I use a one half cup measure and kind of scoop it in there. I don't really mush it into place. You kind of eyeball it that it's uh, about the right volume. One half cup of your shortening a third cup of water, and melt those together on the stove. Now, while your shortening is heating, you want to dice up some vegetables to go in there. I generally, for the grouse-based scotch pies. I use a mixture of carrots and onions. If I were going to do one more with, uh, let's say, beef or lamb, I might think about doing some green peas in there as well. But for this, I'm going to use about one half of a um, medium-sized onion, diced pretty fine, and one handful of small carrots, uh, washed and peeled, and again, diced into small bits. Now that your shortening and uh, water has melted sufficiently, you're going to take and pour that on top of two cups of white flour in a bowl, and you want to then use a fork to uh, knead that together. When it gets to the right uh, pour texture, when it gets as far as you can get with a fork, go ahead and get your hands in there and uh, mix that together until it's one uniform lump. If the texture is a little too uh, too crumbly, then you'll want to add a little bit more water so it sticks together a little bit better. Not very much, a couple of tablespoons. Um, and if it's too gooey and too sticky, then add a little bit of flour. And again, not too much. A little bit of trial and error here. While you've got your dough mixed together and sitting there, your pastry, you should go ahead and saute your carrots and onions. So. Uh, I like to use olive oil, about two tablespoons of olive oil into the saucepan, dump your carrots and your onions in there, turn the heat up to medium high, and give those three or four minutes to kind of caramelize the onions a little bit and soften the carrots slightly. Then you can go ahead and dump in your meat. In this case, it's shredded grouse. If you don't know how to make shredded grouse, you can check out my video on how to do that. This is actually being done with the spruce grouse today. Um, and it's uh, always a challenge to come up with something that makes them tasty, and this is 
certainly a, a very good option. After you add in your meat, you want to add in some sort of stock. Now, because this is uh, grouse, I'm going to use chicken stock. So one cup of water and uh, the appropriate amount of whatever your particular chicken stock is, whether that's uh, cubes or powder. I, I use a powdered one in this particular recipe today. Uh, if I was going to do this with ground beef, ground lamb, venison, I would use a beef stock. That's really the kind of the main difference here. Put all that in there, turn the heat down a bit, and then you're going to want to let that cook for five to ten minutes until it kind of um, simmers down a little bit and thickens up just a bit. You don't want it too runny when you're going to fill the pies. While your filling is thickening up and cooking over there, you come back to your dough and you're going to split this into, I'm going to say you're going to split it into eight sections. That's not actually quite true. You're going to split it as if you're going to get into eight sections. You're going to break off six of those eight. And I do this by breaking it into halves and then halves again and then halves again. Um, leave two eighths, one quarter aside. Okay, so you're going to do six equal portions. Take those and roll them out more or less round and even. You want to then take those and have six little ramekins. You're going to fit your dough down into those ramekins. You might want to think about pre-greasing these ramekins with a little bit of oil or a little bit of butter. It will make it easier to pull the pies out later. I actually am not going to do that here because I usually go ahead and leave these in right through the cooking and storage process and I just eat them right out of the containers. Once you've got all six of your ramekins set up with little pie shells, you take your remaining chunk of dough, your two-eighths portion there, roll that out a little bit, and split it into six even portions. And as you probably guessed, we're now going to roll these out approximately round, and those are going to be our tops, and set all that aside. Now you're ready to get to the final stages. Your filling should have cooked down enough by this time, so get your filling and spoon it out more or less evenly between your six pre-made filled little pie crusts. And then you're going to take the tops and put the tops on there. Now, as you do this, traditionally with a scotch pie, you leave a little uh, rim of dough all the way around it. And that's going to be to catch gravy or something later when you serve it. So it's kind of traditional to make them with this kind of raised edge, crenellated edge. Before you bake these, I like to put them on a cookie sheet because they are going to overflow a little bit. And that way I avoid making a mess in the oven. And you're also going to want to take a sharp knife and poke some little vent holes in the top. You can either make that in artistic patterns or just simple little poke holes. I'm going with the simple little poke holes here today. Slide these into an oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit and cook for around 35 minutes. And check those a little bit early. Maybe check them in around 30 minutes. They're at about 32 minutes now, and I think they're about as done as I want them to get. So let's go ahead and take them out and see how they look. Oh, those look delicious and they smell awesome. Let's take a closer look. Boy, don't those look good. So you'll want to let these cool a little bit before you eat them. Uh, but of course, you can definitely still eat them while they're hot. They're delicious like that. Um, especially if you pour a little bit of some sort of topping like a gravy or maybe a hollandaise sauce or something over them. And usually I have them with some kind of um, often a secondary starch item and uh, some some salad or steamed vegetables, something like that. Um, and uh, very tasty with a cold beer, I might say as well. A couple of final comments about these. Because these have um, quite a lot of, uh, you've got the pastry and you've got a lot of fat in the pastry, these are a lot more filling than you'd think. Two of these with a little bit of sauce over the top and some sides is a really very filling meal. And that's amazing because now you get three nice portions out of one grouse. So it's a very efficient way to use things. Um, the second point is these are a fair bit of work. So I don't make them all that often. But once they cool down, if you uh, wrap these in saran wrap, you can either try taking them out of the uh, ramekins. I actually like leaving them in the ramekins, saran wrap them very well, and then freeze them. 
I'm not a big fan on using a microwave, but this is one of the sorts of things. These reheat really well in the microwave. So if you've got some in the freezer and you want a quick dinner, you unwrap them, you microwave them for five minutes, uh, make your sides, and suddenly you have this delicious homemade dinner that was very little work. So there's a lot of work up front, but you get three nice meals out of it, and it sort of amortizes the workout. Um, they really are one of the tastiest things you can do, or at least one of the tastiest things I can do with, uh, with grouse, and I hope it gave you some ideas. Again, you can also do this with uh, something other than grouse. You can do beef, lamb, venison, um, goose, whatever you want. Um, the only real difference is, I think, in the uh, choice of the stock you use, either a, uh, a chicken-based stock or a beef-based stock, depending on what the meat is. And with that, uh, I'll close off with a few final pictures of how these get devoured. Until next time, this is John the Social Hermit saying goodbye.